The Pentagon's deploying 300 more troops to the Mideast as U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria attack, get this, 27 times in the past two weeks, 27 times in two weeks, and we know the Iranian proxies, they've told us already. Now let's take a look at where the U.S. troops are roughly stationed as of right now. Uh, let's, these are where we are at. These are the attacks that have taken place, the 27 here. Uh, these are the contractors, 45,000 are uh, in this region. This is where we are. The naval bases are, these, these are destroyers, aircraft carriers in the region ready to attack should other nations get involved in the Israeli war. And let's take a look at where our troops are deployed. A total of 45,000. The ones that concern me most, concern us most because they're under attack the most, is Syria and Iraq. But keep in mind, too, when this is... These are the areas of major concern. But keep in mind, we got 13,000 in Kuwait. You can hit Kuwait. Bahrain, which is part of the Abraham Accords, you wouldn't think it would be attacked. But if you attack American assets, you'd be looking at somebody who is attacking for Hamas. Uh, Qatar is a bit dicey. That's who we know that the uh, higher ups in Hamas actually live a luxurious life, have their limousines, and have their uh, four seasons. And the UAE, 3,500 troops. We have a lot of assets in this area, a lot of reasons. Uh, to be concerned, and ultimately, this is the most concerned. 27 attacks, we responded once. With me right now is retired Navy SEAL and recon Marine Corps veteran Mar uh, Mike Sorelli. He joins us. Mike, how frustrated would you be knowing that you've been under rocket attack uh, for the last three or four weeks, and you were told, basically, don't do anything. We'll knock them out of the sky. You'll be okay. Meanwhile, we got a couple of dozen that were hit and a contractor that died of a heart attack. So, Brian, as a ground troop, I can only believe that they are extremely frustrated. I understand that the U.S. is showing restraint in order to prevent this becoming a broader open conflict within the Middle East. But uh, if an American service member is killed or maimed, the U.S. has no other recourse but to retaliate against Iran, uh, Iran with extreme right. prejudice. So we know our guys are just sitting here. And we know we have a, a lot of people in this area, in Iraq. We know in Syria, we've got 900 guys just sitting there. We hit a weapons depot. So our guys are just sitting there knowing there's a problem here, there's a problem here, and the, there's a war raging there. And they know they're under attack. How, mu how much missile defense do these bases have? The bases uh, are, are probably well armed in defense of any indirect fires coming in. Uh, but again, uh, that said, for a ground troop, a young sergeant in the Marine Corps sitting there, it's sort of in, in, in antithesis to, to, to their existence. And that if somebody throws a punch at you, you retaliate back uh, swiftly and, and very uh, determinedly. So, so, Michael, you're in Israel. All of a sudden, you realize Hezbollah might want to get involved. We see some consistent rocket attacks and some retaliation. We realize Hezbollah assets in Syria, some rocket attacks and retaliation. And then over the last few days, guess who else gets involved? The Houthi rebels. They're declaring war on Israel. How do you, how do you game plan this out, knowing different fronts are opening up by the hour? Well, I think the question everyone's asking, is this the first domino with Yemen declaring war on Israel? to a open, broader conflict. Remember, uh, Yemen's been in civil war since 2014 when the Houthis uh, removed Hadi, President Hadi, who then fled to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the Houthis are a jihadist organization backed by Iran, and, and quite frankly, they were on the terror watch list until February of 2021 when President or the Biden administration removed them. But uh, I think for Saudi Arabia and UAE, who were actively involved in, uh, in, in uh, Yemen, uh, basically due to Iranian influence. This doesn't mean state-to-state -state warfare. They'll most likely do clandestine mm -hmm. and indirect operations, as well as economic sanctions to limit Iran's uh, influence or, or broadening, mm -hmm. broadening the conflict further. So Iran did war games a couple uh, a week ago, at which time they're rolling out tanks that we gave them in 1978. Uh, they have some, some weapons, they have some assets, but they're not a sophisticated army. Everybody you mentioned have one thing in common. Iran. How much longer are we going to pretend? It's not Saudi Arabia that's the problem. It's not Oman that's the problem. It is Iran that's the problem. Sooner or later, we're going to have to say it out loud. Final thought, Mike? I, I'll tell you this. Iran knows they can't win in an open conflict against the U.S. and Arab states. So they will continue with the indirect and clandestine warfare supporting these uh, jihadist organizations. 
but Iran has to be dealt with. And quite frankly, we allowed their oil exports to increase from about five billion to 40 billion over the last years. Those economic sanctions need to be reimposed and crippling and right. diplomacy ultimately by the Gulf states to end their influence. As much as they were rich and that's a problem, they were in a box. They are not in a box now. Mike, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.